Welcome to Specific Love. Here recently we've had a bunch of people come into the DIY community and I wanted to get back to the basics to help them get their projects done safer and easier. With that said, let's talk about the miter saw. Now I'm going to be mainly talking about your standard compound miter saw and your sliding version as well. Now of course these machines have a bunch of different names including of her drop saw and chop saw but when we're referring to a chop saw usually it's made for metal will only usually go up and down and has a completely different blade. I'm going to refer to this as just a plain miter saw. Now here are a couple features of most miter saws. Of course this is your table which you put your wood on. This right here is your fence which you push it up against. You have your blade guard which usually retracts as you go up and down and you have your handle up here on the top. Sometimes it's off to the side, it just depends on your make and model. Now somewhere near the bottom of your table you should have an angle gauge. This will allow you to pivot your saw side to side and in the back somewhere you should have an angle gauge that will allow you to tilt the saw as well. And somewhere on the front and back you should have a handle to lock those angles in place. Now most miter saws come with either a 10 inch like I have or a 12 inch blade. Now I've seen some exceptions that are around the seven and a half inch mark. The thing is, is those are not really designed for thick pieces of wood that you could be cutting. So I'd strictly stick to the 10 or 12 inch miter saws. Now when we're making a cut on the miter saw, in almost every case we're going to be doing a cross cut across the grain of your wood. So you need to make sure you have the appropriate blade as well. So, either on the blade itself or on the packaging, there should be either where it says cross cut or maybe even a picture of it cross cutting the wood. Make sure you get that appropriate blade as well so that you can get the best cuts as possible. Also look at the number of teeth that are on the blade. Usually the more teeth, the finer the cut and prettier the finish. Now a miter cut is referred to as moving the base down here and getting the angle of the miter you want. Neat thing about most miter saws, it actually has some locking spots that will allow you to do the most common cuts. Now a bevel cut is referred to when you tilt the saw on its side. Now a compound miter cut is when you have the head tilted and the base turned as well. Now here are a bunch of tips to make your miter cuts even better. Now when you first get your miter saw it's very important to get a square and make sure your blade is square to your table and to your fence. And then go in and make the adjustments on your little gauges here to make sure those are at zero. Just remember when it comes from a factory it's going to get jostled around in all the shipping to get to the store or get to your house. There's a good chance that these are knocked off a little bit so make sure they're nice and square. Now when you're making your cut on the saw, there's always a chance, depending on your dominant hand and the configuration of your handle up here, you might accidentally cross your arm because of a difficult cut. Please don't ever do that. I've done that in the past and I was very, very fortunate I did not get hurt. That's just an accident waiting to happen. Please just keep your hands to the appropriate sides and make sure they're several inches away from the blade because we don't want to cause any accidents on your arm or lose any of your digits. And some saws will even have a warning line to keep your hand behind. And whenever you're about to make your cut, make sure you're pressing down towards the table and back towards the fence. Now when it's time to make a cut, of course measure out the wood, make a little line across where you need to cut, and then take it over to the miter saw. But don't mess up like I did when I first started cutting wood. Don't cut directly on that line because the saw is going to take a little bit of wood off both sides of that line. What you need to do is figure out exactly which side is going to be cut off, or in other words the trash piece, and you need to make the blade just on that side of the line. Now whenever you're about to make your cut, make sure your blade is up off of your work piece before you get it started. That'll get the blade spinning and should make a nice clean cut. If you were to start it down touching your blade, a couple things could happen. One, it could jar up on you, or two, it could just mess up your work piece. In any case, that's hard on your motor and you don't want to do it because it's just unsafe. Whenever you need to make a bunch of repetitive cuts, don't just measure out each piece. Otherwise, you're going to have some longer and some shorter, and I guarantee you, it will drive you a little bit nuts. Instead, add a stop block. Now the stop block is just a piece of wood that we have put to the exact length we need to cut and then clamped it in place. This will allow us to slide the wood up to it, make that cut, remove it, slide the wood up again, and make that cut, making sure that all these pieces are the exact same length. It's also a good idea to have a little 45 degree relief cut in the bottom of your stop block so as you're moving the wood back and forth, sawdust doesn't get in here and make the cut a little bit off. Now when we make our cuts with the miter saw, it's good practice to always make sure that the blade comes to a full stop before we lift this up. Now in full reality, I'm guilty and I'm sure many other woodworkers are guilty of raising a saw back up immediately after making the cut. 
In many cases, this is not going to be an issue. You have the fence that the wood's going to be pressed against, and as long as you're holding it there, there's a good chance nothing's going to happen. But there is one time you need to make sure you stop it every single time. That's when we have a stop block. Let me show you why. When we have a stop block here, the wood is going to be pressed up against it. So as the blade comes down and makes the cut, there is no give and take for room and movement in just in case the blade bumps it on the way back up. Therefore, this piece of wood that was just cut is now going to get lifted up and slung around and could potentially hit and hurt you badly. Now let me make this cut and I'll show you what I mean. See how it's already lifting up? I barely moved the blade. That right there would have been a projectile. Now sometimes when you need to make repetitive cuts, your fence may not be long enough to add those stop blocks. That's when we can add an additional fence or an extension fence. This is just a piece of wood that you know is straight that you can add your stop blocks on way out here depending on the length that you have of wood. This can also work good if you have a long piece of wood you're trying to cut to help stabilize it and make sure it's straight. Most modern miter saws have some screw holes where you can add some screws all the way through into your extension fence to make it nice and sturdy. Now anytime you're going to be cutting a long board, it's a good idea to support it on the ends with some extra pieces of wood or maybe an extension wing or maybe even have a person stand out and help you. It really just depends. You want to make sure that you're holding it out on the ends because you don't want it to accidentally move around and rock on you as you're making the cut, which not only could be dangerous, it could mess up your cut. Next up is one of my favorite tips and has helped me many times. Now sometimes when we're cutting a board to length, we may have it just a hair too long. We need to shave off just, I mean, just a little smidge. In those cases, we want to bring the blade all the way down, then take the wood and push it up against it, just providing pressure on the blade. And then we're gonna securely hold it in place, lift the blade up and start the blade and slowly bring the blade down and it should take off just a tiny little bit. Let me show you this in action. I've added a little pencil mark to the end of this board. We're now going to bring the blade down, push the board up against it, provide constant pressure, bring the blade up, start it and cut it. There you go. Just a little bit off. Now if you're cutting a bunch of softwood, say like pine on your miter saw, there's a good chance you're going to have a sap buildup around the teeth of your blade. In those cases, your cuts are not going to be as fine as they can be. So you need to go back and periodically clean your blade. You can use chemicals, or in my case, I like to go with a wire brush occasionally and knock it off. It really just depends on how bad your situation is. In either case, make sure your blade stays clean. Now when you're talking about dust collection on a miter saw, in most cases, well, it's just lacking. Some of them will have a dust port back here. Some of them may even have two dust ports. And if you hook up a vacuum to them, it will definitely help. But it's not going to prevent. In most cases, you're going to sling dust all over to the sides and to the back of your miter saw. Now, in my case, I have a little port back here, a little frame that tries to suck all my dust back in there. It still does not do a very good job. The only system I've truly seen to work with this is developing a large shroud that goes over your entire miter saw. Some of these are made out of wood, some of them are made out of plastic. It just depends on whatever design you like. In those cases, you need to hook that up to a large dust collection system, and it does seem to help pull most of that saw dust back and into the system. Otherwise, in my case, I get used to just occasionally going with the vacuum and cleaning it up. Now, if you ever need to cut a dowel on a miter saw, sometimes when you stick it in place and the blade comes down and starts touching it, it can easily start to spin on you and freak me out a little bit. So let me show you an easier and safe way to do this. First off, take a scrap board and we want to rip a 45 degree angle down the length of it. Once we get that, we need to trim it down so that we have two matching pieces. Now, I'm sure some people will be asking, why don't we just rip one board in half and then match them up? That can be done, but just keep in mind, we need two of these symmetrical and to get two of these cut perfectly in the middle can be a little bit difficult. It's just a lot easier to have one long board and trim it down. I then clamped them together and added a couple screws so that we know everything is nice and sturdy. Now once we get the holder ready, we want to pull down the blade and we want to just rest it right up against it. We're not pushing in, we just have it right barely against it so that as normal cutting, it won't hit it. Then you take your dowel, 
And of course, have a mark on it exactly where you want it. And you want to place it right at the edge there. Push down towards the table, which should provide three points of contact on your dowel and in towards the fence and make your cut. There we go. Real nice and easy. When you're working on a project and say you have a little piece that you need to cut in half, having your fingers that close to the blade as you're cutting is not only scary, it's very dangerous. Let me show you a little bit safer way to do it. Now take the piece of wood we need to cut and we'll position it in place exactly in alignment where it needs to be cut. Make sure it's tied up against the fence. Instead of having your fingers here, we want to take a pencil with a good eraser and we're going to use it to provide downward pressure. The fence should keep it from going backwards as long as you're holding it down. And this will allow you to have a good three or four extra inches away from the blade. Let me make this cut and show you. There we go. It's still a dangerous cut, but that's much safer than having your fingers right next to it. Now one of the great things about a miter saw is usually they're relatively lightweight and you can move them around pretty easily. Now if you are going to transport them around, I strongly recommend locking the blade in the down position. You can usually find a lock somewhere in the back of your saw if you can't. Look in your manual, you should be able to see it. This will allow you to transport it without bumping into the blade and getting cut or having other things ram into the blade and possibly getting broken. Now if by chance you have a sliding miter saw, let me show you a technique that will help reduce some tear out, especially if you're cutting plywood. Now for this technique, we're actually going to be making two cuts. The first one, we're going to make, it's going to be kind of shallow, no more than halfway through. And then we're making a second cut that does the full depth all the way down. And that may not be perfect, but wow, that is really close. Now you might have noticed in the last tip that the piece of wood I cut actually fell down into the little insert that's on my table. And the reason why that table has such a large gap is for your angles for your saws so it doesn't come in contact with it. But let me show you an easy way to fix that if you ever need to make a bunch of small little cuts. Now we're going to take some thin plywood and we've cut it so it will fit nicely against the fence and on the table. And we're going to use some double sided tape to just stick it to both. Then we want to carefully make the first cut so we know where everything's going to line up. And now that we have a zero clearance here, we don't have to worry about stuff falling in that gap. Now one more advantage to having a sliding miter saw is the ability to do rabbits and dados in your wood. Let me show you how. First off, we need to know exactly how deep we want the dado or rabbit to go in our wood. And then we want to measure roughly about how low the saw blade will be. Now somewhere on the side of your blade, you're going to have what they call a depth stop. This prevents the blade from going too far. You're going to loosen this up, adjust it to the depth that you need, and lock it back down. And that will allow the blade to only go down so far. Now before we make this cut, we have to make one more adjustment. If you look here, as the blade comes down, yes, at the front it will make the cut. But at the back here, because the blade of course is round, it won't fully cut the back. So we first need to get a little extra board here. This is kind of like a sacrificial board. And that will allow you to space it out from the fence so that you can fully cut that flat surface. Alright, let's make this cut. Now here's the finished cut. You'll probably still have to go back in here with a chisel and some sandpaper to clean it all up. But that's a simple way to use your miter saw to do a rabbit or even a dado. Now here's a quick way to improve your cutting time. Now, say you need two cuts, one at three inches and one at six inches. Instead of making a measurement, mark it, cut it, measure it, mark it, cut it. How about measure in one side three, measure in the other side six, cut, cut, get back to your project even faster. 
Now, if you have a miter saw, I'd strongly suggest building you some type of a mobile cart, especially if you have a small shop like mine. That way you can easily move it around to where you need it and out of the way when you don't. Now on mine, I also have some side wings over here to make it a little bit easier, especially when I have those really long boards to make those cuts. The nice thing about having this mobile cart is I was able to build it to the height that I prefer. I actually prefer my miter saw to be a little bit higher than some people, just to make it easier for my cutting experience. It's completely up to you on your own design, but I would strongly suggest building some type of a mobile cart. And last, but definitely not least, make sure you have some eye protection and some ear protection. This thing's gonna throw around a bunch of wood and be loud doing it. Also, if by chance you have some small children, I'd strongly recommend unplugging this every time you're done with it in the shop because you never could be too safe around them. Now there's a bunch of tips for using your miter saw. If by chance you know of any others, please put those in the comments below. We want to help out as many beginners as possible. Now right over here, I'm going to have a playlist of several other tools with a bunch of tips for those, so make sure you check those out, especially if you're a beginner. With that said, I hope you get out in your shop and have fun building. I'd strongly, strong, strong, strongly. Peace. Try it again. All right, I forgot what I was going to say. Cr crut? Crut. <laughs> On the cro cross off.